Hello everybody, my name is Walter, and today I want to show you how you can build a self-randomizing color combination lock. So what is this about? Well, basically it's a combination lock that once it has been solved and is relocked, will change the actual combination and tell you the new combination at the back of the build. So why would that be interesting? Well, one of the most severe weaknesses of a color combination lock is that once someone sees you entering the actual combination, um, well, they know the combination and can follow you. And even if you don't do that, usually what most people do is just press one button once and that is not really shuffling the combination. So um, most people just shovel the lock right next to the door or whatever. And if someone comes along, he will most likely first try to just shovel the first part of the lock. So the security is not that high. So um, basically, that's what I wanted to solve with this build. Now, this build is based on an April Fool's joke I made a couple of years ago, um, which already had the shoveling part down, but it didn't show you the new combination. Now I added a new combination or the display for the new combination at the back here. And the system is currently in a not solved state. And as you can see, once I have the solved state, which is the same as displayed at the back here, obviously what is left to right is right to left on the other side, uh, the flipping you have to do in your head. But once you have done that, you get a power signal out of the system. So what you all need to, need to do now is well, go through the door or whatever has activated. And once you are at the back, you press this button here and the system starts to shovel again. And you can see this is completely randomized how long it runs. And now you have the new combination displayed at the back here. At the front, nothing has changed. So the old combination is still displayed, but it's no longer the current combination. So that's basically what this build here is about and why I uh, decided to design this build. And yeah, with that out of the way, let's finally talk about the sizes. So this is a modular design. Each module is three blocks wide. It's nine blocks high, but just so. Um, most of it is just eight blocks high, but unfortunately we have those two redstone wire here, which I couldn't fit in in the layer below due to uh, crosstalk issues. So unfortunately this is nine blocks in total. And the length of the build is um, 11 blocks wall to wall. 12 blocks if you also count this button. And well, that's the sizes. Now let's talk about the required resources. So for one module, you're going to need, of course, building blocks plus the 10 colored blocks. I am using wolves for this example here, but you can use pretty much any kind of movable block for this. Then you need two steps, one transparent block, like for example, glass, uh, which is basically used to discern which color is the correct color. So it needs to be movable. Then 17 redstone dust, four torches, five redstone repeaters, three comparators, 12 observers, three node blocks, 11 pistons and seven stick pistons. Then a single button, two hoppers, two droppers, a chest, at least one non-stackable items and a couple stackable items. Oh, well, actually, uh, when it comes to items, you may need a couple stacks. And then for reading out the signal properly and also um, the reset, which is somewhat optional. Uh, you're gonna need a uh, well, redstone torch, repeater, comparator, sticky piston, a composter, some cake or other stuff to go in the composter, the button obviously, and maybe some redstone wire. And that's basically all you're gonna need. So let's show you how to build this combination lock here. So let's start with the first module. Begin with a four high, three wide wall with a gap at eye level at the center. To the right of that, we need a button. And then on top of the wall, we need to go one block towards the front and leave this hidden corner free. 
and then you can go back but you can also continue with the wall or whatever concerning the floor we also need to leave this hidden corner free and once you have built this it's time to go behind the block with the button and place a redstone torch there then block on top and from there go down three times with normal blocks put redstone dust on top grab a sticky piston place it in this corner so it's not powered and in front of it an observer powering towards the back of the build then while we're in this corner place two normal pistons uh, right behind that and powering downwards and then while we're here actually two more normal pistons towards the back there then here place a sticky piston below going in the same direction as the sticky piston up there and this time the observer goes towards the front place normal pistons in front of those as you can see here and now go four times up from the observer and on top of that so at the fifth place another two uh, normal pistons as you can see here and now we have our basic piston feed tape more or less done now let's go down here at a two by two of observers running in the direction of those pistons here and connect them with pull blocks then at the top here place just two observers as you can see here running into full blocks and then two node blocks here on top of the node block at the center of the build you can place a normal block this is just there to silence this node block uh, to avoid a bit of a additional noise and with that it's time to fill in this inner feed tape with the colors and to do that first let's talk about where you need to place those blocks basically you have this ring here but for this entire thing to be able to move you need to leave those two spaces empty and the rest of those 10 blocks now can be filled in with the various colors once you have those blocks in there it's time to grab a sticky piston and place it in the center of this feed tape facing forward which should now push one of those blocks right into the gap we left earlier next uh, let's actually place a node block in front of this observer there and actually place a block on top of that to silence that node block and now it's time to fill in this feed tape here this determines which color is the correct color for the combination here and basically the system uses a transparent block to determine that for example a glass block and that needs to be placed opposing to the color we want to select for so this one here would select for the light gray wool and for example if i went with the black i would have to place it down there white would be up there for example so you get the idea for simplicity's sake i will go with what i is currently selected and all other blocks in this feed tip need to be movable but full blocks that's really important that those are full blocks once you have done that place a container like a chest right in the middle of this feed tape here and fill it completely with items we want a signal strength of 15 when we look with a comparator at it and while we're on the subject of a comparator just place a block here hovering above this observer there and place a comparator on top which would take out a signal once we have a full block in between here then let's go and place a full block in front of the comparator then towards the middle a raised block hovering below that a lowered block and towards the back an upside down slab as you can see here then while we're here actually let's place a repeater in this gap here powering towards the left of the build then place a dropper facing forward next to the slab and in this corner here running into the dropper another hopper now it's time for some redstone wire place this on the top of the hopper and those three blocks here place a block here with a torch to the left side of it then while we're here let's actually go down there first place a block next to the or in behind the node block and then another two by two of normal blocks like so put down three redstone wire a repeat on two and 
Äh, read once, read text. Grab a sticky piston and place it in front of this retic repeater. Then grab a normal piston and place it diagonally to the two tick repeater. Next, let's go to this dropper here. Place a block diagonally like so. Grab again a comparator. Place it on top and run this into a full block with a torch on top. Then place a block on top of the torch with another torch towards the front. Then once you have that, place one more block here. Then two blocks as you can see there. Put redstone dust on the raised blocks and this lower block here. And the repeater taking output from the torch into this block here on four ticks. Grab an upside down slab again and place it on top of this redstone wire there. And again put some redstone dust on top. Run this into a full block as you can see here. Then grab a normal piston, place it powering downwards which should extend and then we need another normal piston powering sideways next to this redstone wire there. While we're there let's actually place one more observer connecting this piston to this piston there. And now we are getting close. So first place a block in front of this redstone wire. Then we need a sticky piston on top with a observer powering towards the front which runs into a full block and then take an output from that with a repeater running into the space above this stick, uh, normal piston there. Then go back to this block, place a sticky piston powering downwards below it with an observer powering downwards below that and below that one more full block. Now we are getting close. So next grab a dropper, place it powering towards the left of the build with a hopper running in the opposing direction in front of it. Then place a block down here so we can take an output with our last comparator, which runs into a full block with another full block to the side, put redstone dust on top. And then we need another sticky piston in this gap and an observer powering downwards like this here. And that's pretty much all of the circuitry. Now we need to still fill in this feed tape here at the back. So those are again 10 blocks, six on this side and four on this side. And the colors for this feed tape need to be the same colors as used in this now somewhat hidden central feed tape. They need to be in the same order that you would see if you look at the build from the left side, if you look at the build from the back side here. And the current selected or correct color needs to be this block here. So at the same height as the display on this side here. And with that, the circuitry is pretty much finished. Now the last part is actually setting up our randomizers here. Uh, this randomizer has basically two components. The first is a countdown and the second is the actual randomizer. Uh, this here will produce either a signal strength of 1 or a signal strength of 3. Either will activate the shuffling of our combination, but only the signal strength of 3 will also trigger the countdown to actually count one further down. So uh, to set this up is pretty simple. All you need to do is put a combination of non-stackable and stackable items inside of this dropper here. And each time the dropper is activated, it will randomly select one of those. With a setup like this here, you have a 50-50 chance of counting down or not counting down. If it's not counting down, you basically do an extra shuffle. With this, you would have a higher chance of actually counting down, so you'll get overall less shuffles with this here, you would get more shuffles. Just make sure that you use different stackable items, either rename them or use different items, because after one shuffle or whatever, it will at some point get connected or put into one slot and this will no longer work. 
So if you're using several different stackable items or renamed items, it works. Uh, probably, if not, you may run into some issues. Obviously, this year would still be a 50-50 chance, no real ch uh, change, but you can play around with this a bit. And then finally, we have the countdown here. Just put some items into the dropper, and that will determine how many uh, successful uh, slots you need or um, well, choices you need from the randomizer up there. And that's the randomizer set up. And well, with that, let's give it a little test run. So currently it's solved, and if we unsolve it, the system should start to shuffle around. And you should get at least three shuffles. It depends a bit on how many the randomizer will give you, but um, somewhere around six is a good number. In this case, it was seven, I believe. Uh, the new color should be brown. So let's test this just to be sure. And one more. And you can see, this is the correct one. This line here at the back is unpowered. So with that done, it's time to, well, first of all, add a bit of decoration at the back here and also add a few more modules. Uh, and then I will talk about how you can read out the system properly without any issues and how you can reset the system from the back. And voila. So now, as you can see, I have three cool modules. They are already interconnected. No. Uh, need to do anything. I also added a back wall which looks somewhat similar to the front. Although since the blocks are not being pushed out, I decided to make a little indent with those stairs here and add a bit of light to the sides so you can actually see the colors properly, um, which was a bit of an issue with the difference between the light and the dark gray wool blocks. But anyway, this is now working. And with that, it's time to talk about a few things. First of all, if you want to have many modules, the maximum of modules right next to each other is five. The reason is uh, due to the signal decay in the signal line here at the back. Uh, signal can only travel 15 blocks, and since each module is three blocks wide, you are limited to five. If you want to have more, you will need to recycle the signal with a repeater. So just put a repeater in there, leave a gap to the next module, and then you can continue with up to another five, and then you can repeat this. Uh, obviously, the repeater needs to go in the direction where you want to actually read out the system. And with that, we are on the subject of reading out the system. So, basically, this line here represents the opposite of the solved state. So, if the lock is solved, this line here is unpowered. And if you want to have a powered lamp, for example, just put a torch there and you're good. If the lock is locked, then this line here is powered, torch is not powered and the lamp turns off. Now there is one possible issue that appears either if you have only one module or if all modules shuffle at the same time, which can happen if you uh, don't reset the entire system in the way I will show you in just a few moments. In that case, you get flickering of this line at the back. Uh, the reason is even if you are switching between two full blocks in between the container and the comparator here, for about two ticks, there is no block in between and you get an off pulse and that will cause the torch here to flicker on. To avoid that, all you need to do is run the signal first through a 4 tick repeater or a 3 tick repeater should also be enough and only then through the torch. That way you don't get the flickering. And that's the reading out and with that let's talk about the proper reset. There is one possible issue you have, either if you have only one module or if you have all modules activated at the same time, or the shuffling activated at the same time. And that is if you have set up those randomizers to high numbers or you are just unlucky, then all of them will shuffle 10 times. All of them will come back to the solve state and the shuffling stops. So basically the lock starts to shovel and resolves itself. And to avoid that, I would recommend only starting with resetting the first module. Now you could do that by simply pressing the button here and maybe uh, have a bit of a delay and then only close the door. So you press the button, you run through the door and the door closes behind you. And then you can read out a new combination. The problem is if you are for whatever reason too slow. For example, there's a creeper in the way and you, uh, well, 
don't want to go there. Uh, and then you end up on the wrong side of the door and you can't read out the new combination. So I would recommend putting a button on the opposing side. And in that case, the simplest way to do that is just put a block here with the button. And then behind that, we need a sticky piston with a composter to the face. Then we read out that signal once the piston extends with a comparator, and this runs in the block with some reds and dust on top. And now we need to make sure that we only activate this first module here. For activating this, we basically just need to power those three lines here. So in this case, we need a signal strength of four. So just put in four layers of cake, for example, and you're good to go. Just make sure you don't accidentally put too much in there and don't accidentally power the next module over. That's pretty important. So um, with this set up, we can give it a test run, uh, although well, we can already also put in our proper readout for now. So um, we have a bit of feedback there. And with that, let's press this button here and you should see that those don't change in sync. Oh well, somewhat in sync, but as you can see, this one here changed first once and only then all of them started to change. And that meant this one here was one step further along the line and you were no longer in danger of this thing, this entire lock here, shuffling back into a solved state. And now let's quickly test this. So we are brown, yellow, brown, just to make sure that everything works properly. And we can sure uh, be sure that everything worked the way we wanted to. And yellow. And you can see now the lock is solved again. And if I were to press any of those buttons, either at the front or at the back, the whole system would relock again. And with that, we have reached the end of this tutorial about this self-randomizing color combination lock. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and well, see ya.